Okay, confusion, confusion, and more confusion. So buying a laptop in 2023 is what is the word that I'm looking for? Confusing. Because just see here, if you go on Amazon and search for say a laptop under 50,000, there are tons of options and so many configurations. i5 or Ryzen 5, 144Hz or 4K, 8GB DDR5 or 16GB DDR4. So many things to study before buying a laptop. Well, worry not because TechWiser has done the homework for you. I did the homework. Yes, <laughs> And I'll tell you in simple words what you should be looking for when buying a laptop. And at the end, we'll also be telling you how much you should spend on a laptop according to your use. So, let's freaking go. And before we get to the video, this video is sponsored by TechWiser. That's new. Well, I know a better person who can do this. So, as you know, TechWiser is always looking out for the best talent in the community and this time we are hiring for not one, two, but three positions. But before we come to that, there are two important things to keep in mind. Number one, this is a full-time position in-house. So yeah, you will have to come to our Delhi NCR office to get started. And second, this is good. We are looking for both experience as well as freshers. But we do need your proof of work. Now you can know what positions are open and how to apply from the first link in the description below. So this is Pranal. Over to you, Prateek. First up is process. This is the most important and the most confusing thing when buying a laptop and this confusion is done purposely by the laptop makers. But I'll try to make things as simple as possible for you guys. So we have two companies, AMD and Intel. AMD's processor is called Ryzen and Intel calls their processor just i-series. Higher number is equal to better performance is equal to more price. So i7 will have more performance than i5 or Ryzen 7 will have more performance than Ryzen 5. Now, just like Algebra, both the companies started adding alphabets to their numbers. U, P, H, and this is where the real confusion starts. Okay, see here, so on the board, you have the two companies over here. On the left-hand side, you have the use case scenario. So suppose if you're a student who just want to do basic things, web browsing, Word, Excel, you can buy the Intel U-series or the AMD U-series CPU. And if you want more performance and you want to do casual gaming at 1080p graphic designing, then Intel P-series makes sense. And if you want the best performance and you want to do gaming and video editing at 4K, then you can get HS and HX series for AMD. And for Intel, it is H-series, HK series, HX series. Lots of them. Okay, talking about displays, there are three types of popular displays that you get in laptops. Number one is the TN panel or most brands just call it LED backlit. This is the most basic type of display. Like see here in this Chromebook, if you look from the front, the display is good. And if you look at it sideways, you can barely see anything. And then comes the IPS panel, which is much, much better than the basic type of displays. Like see here, this Realme laptop has IPS panel and watching movies and all the color, brightness, they look so good. And all of these products you can buy from the product tag below. But if you can spend money, there is OLED laptop displays. And this is the best display money can buy in laptops. So see here, we have this Samsung Galaxy Book 3, which has an OLED display and it looks so gorgeous. And for most people for watching movies or photo editing, this is sufficient. Only drawback is OLED screen cannot have anti-glare coating, so they are super reflective. Another aspect is display resolution. See, higher display resolution is equal to bigger price. They are expensive. Also for gamers out there, there is also 144Hz refresh rate displays. And that refresh rate brings me to graphics card because there is no point of 144Hz display if the laptop gives only 60 FPS in game. Let me explain. Now, every laptop has a graphics card. The lower priced or most laptops have an integrated graphic card, which is low powered. While in a few laptops, there is a dedicated graphic card where there is a separate chip for graphics. What's the difference you ask? Well, let me show you. See, we have this Samsung Galaxy Book 3, which has an integrated GPU. And when I try to run Forza, it clearly shows that my GPU isn't supported. Same game, Forza on a laptop with Nvidia GPU and see, it runs decently. Now, laptops with dedicated GPU also have drawbacks. They consume a lot of power. So you will have to carry a separate, more bulky power brick to deal with. So if you're not gaming or doing high-end video editing and all, a laptop without dedicated graphics card will be just fine. Also, gaming laptops don't have that good battery life. Like if you're gaming, you will always need to have it plugged in with the power brick. Now you'll be like, okay, Pratik, that is all fine. But which graphics card should I get? Well, see, if I go on to explain in detail about every graphic card, TGP, MUX switch and all, 
this will become a big and boring. So I'll give you a rule of thumb. If you plan on playing high-end games at 1080p 60Hz with medium to high settings, then RTX 3050 and up should be good. Like we recently covered the Acer Aspire 7 with RTX 3050. It ran control with DLSS and everything pretty decently. You can check out that video here if you want to. But if you plan on playing at 4K 144Hz, then you can look into the RTX 40 series and all, but it will be very expensive. Another factor for any laptop is RAM. Now see, if you buy a laptop in 2023, high chances are it will at least have 8 GB of RAM and that is sufficient if you're doing document writing, PowerPoint, presentation, video call, or even photo editing. However, many new laptops these days don't have the option to upgrade the RAM and sometimes it is mentioned on the website. If not, you will have to see the review or tear down videos on YouTube. Subscribe to TechWiser. Now the question that comes up is, should I get DDR5 RAM or DDR4 RAM? If you can push your budget a little and get DDR5, because you buy a laptop for three years, sometimes even more, four, five years. So while a DDR4 may be okay now, it will not be okay after three years. And finally, the most important factor for buying a laptop is your budget. So if you have a budget of around 15, 20,000 and you want a laptop for online classes or basic tasks, then get an Asus Chromebook, which comes around the same price range of 15 to 20,000. For under 40,000, like if you're a student and want to do some casual gaming or light photo editing, then this Realme laptop is really good, like it exceeded our expectations. However, if you want a little bit extra and if you have a budget of 60,000 and you want to do gaming as well as occasional video editing, then the Acer Aspire 7 or HP Victus is a good option. If you want to increase the budget and go 70, 80,000, it is only recommended if you earn a living out of the laptop. And well, the choice here is endless. My only suggestion would be get specs that are mostly recent. Avoid GTS 1650 graphic card. They are too old now. So yeah, that was the video. Now, yes, I didn't talk about things like trackpad, keyboard, speaker, ports. Those are important too, but covering all of those would have made this video too long and complicated. So I tried to keep things as simple as possible for you guys and discuss the most important factors for buying a laptop. And I know some of you will come and ask, why didn't I talk about MacBooks? Well, see, if you have the budget for it and if your software runs on Mac OS, then definitely get a MacBook. Apple Silicon is really powerful and good. On that note, this is Pradeek signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew.